right now I'm inside Northern Country Chic, and um, Kristen, I've picked out this hat just for you because I know it's all you, girl. So remember, this is one of 25 merchants participating in tonight's Ladies' Night. Hey, guys, good morning. So Megan mm -hmm. Martin is finishing up her final good touches Gucci. on her work. As you can see, I'm obviously the lion. Megan, you did this so fast. Now, yep. if someone wanted your services, roughly how much would something like this cost, and how long would it take? Um, we could get that done in about 35, 40 minutes. You're looking at probably about 50 bucks or something right. like this. Hey, Steven, can you hear me? I can hear you. What do you got going on over there? So right now, I am currently working on a latex abrasion on Evelyn's neck. Hundreds of these walk-ins throughout the nation, including here outside Flint Northwestern High School. Organizers want to send the message that it's not an us versus them. This is a positive message, as you can see. Students here holding up signs that read more people with positive attitudes, quality education, a great public school. Tell me what else. This goes to all of you. Raise up your hand if you feel like you do get this full. full so do you wish you had more support than what you currently have? Raise up your hand. Um, do some of you sometimes as you're going through your day at school, are there some things that come across your mind that you wish you had that would have, like what? Let me ask to see. Um, better, more, like better technology so we can enhance our skills. Anybody else? I feel as though if we had more stuff, we'd have a better positive attitude here. What do you mean you, you, more stuff would help you with a positive attitude? What do you mean? Like if we had what we need, we wouldn't get so frustrated and think negative. So have you tasted the coffee yet? Hey guys, good morning. Oh, I so have tasted the coffee, Kristen. Here, look, I have my espresso and I have been drinking away. Mm. And you know when on air people, they pretend like something's delicious just because they're on TV? I'm not pretending. It's really good. So I can predict that something children will be doing because across mid-Michigan, many schools have closed and make sure you check for those closings with our app. They're going to be making those uh, snowballs, you know, the kind that are really nice and soft, easy to do with this kind of snow. So for now, I'm live in Cotchville Township. Ilse Luhan Hayes, you know I can't resist. This is going out to you, Ahmed. Thanks for the snow. Fox 66. Guess what? We're going to be telling you about a really cool program that they have, and it involves three meals. Good morning. Students are getting their breakfast right now. That's coming up. Hi, how are you? All right, so we have been playing um, a pass play, so check it out. Here we go. I'm going to throw the ball. I'm playing quarterback. Ready, set, hut. And they say I have a pretty decent arm. There you go. She caught it. Yeah, I was a little nervous. This is what's, what's happening now. See this line that you see behind me? This is the line to Precinct 12. So if you belong to Precinct 3 or 5, you can just come on in and vote. But if you belong to Precinct 12, well, unfortunately, you have to wait in this long line. Now, I want to introduce you to Sherry. She said to me that she's going to be a little patient this morning, although she's waiting. Sherry, um, so obviously you heard about the computer glitch. It's been fixed, but but um, you said you're going to be patient. Yes, yes, I am. Because you have to be. Yes. <laughs> after I worked last night, I worked midnight shift, so after 12 hours, I knew I had to come in. I worked tonight, so it's my only time. I have to be patient. She is trucking along with a fellow runner there in downtown Flint. Ilse, how's it going? And we're at the hey finish guys. line. Hey, guys. <laughs> Liz says we're at the finish line. We just passed the finish line here on Saginaw Street in downtown Flint. This is Elizabeth Jones, my new friend, because she had some health issues, right, Liz? I did. And I did. Kim helped you out. Tell it us sure about did. it. Yeah, I, um, when I was nine years old, I was diagnosed with cystic lung disease. I want to ask you guys a question. Do you recognize this song? I've transformed into Laverne. I used to love this show, courtesy of Costume Rentals by Judy. So let's meet Judy. Since 1994, Hidden Harvest has rescued over 30 million pounds of food. I mean, there's potatoes here, beans, pop, sweet tomatoes, cucumbers. And so what do I mean by rescued the food? Well, joining us right now is Samantha McKenzie. She is the president and CEO of Hidden Harvest. Sam, we're talking about food waste, basically. Right, Hidden Harvest solves two problems with, you know, one system. Have you ever hurt yourself doing this kind of, you know, the, and we're about to show you what they do, but have you ever hurt yourself? All Anybody? of the, uh, all of the pain that, that happens during the mud show is emotional. It hurts in here. 
Have, have you had your heart broken? Oh, right, look at me. Yes, obviously. <laughs> Let's see some action. What oh. are we going to do? What's going on here? Tell oh, us. He's going in the mud. He uh, you said action, and he, he, said action so I feel it. he jumped right into it. So uh, Tuggy's going to do a quick little demonstration of how he goes into mud. Let's do a countdown. Are you ready? 50, 49, Faster. 2, 1. <laughs> Head to our website for more information and ticket prices. But remember, festival's going on this weekend and Labor Day. So don't don't stop watching. Here we go. We're going to give you some action. Oh, you're right. beautiful. You, I love you. you. I love you, too. We're getting married. Okay. okay. All right. Do you? Do you? Say I do. Bop, on the count bop, of three. One, two, three. I do. I, I do. do. Oh. Oh. So good, right? So good. It I feels it. so this good. This is what love is. So good. I did it, guys. She did it. She, did it. she did it. I didn't even get she up. Did it. All right, she did it. So She's stuck. Oh my yeah. That's our girl, Elsie. So Anything for a good guys, live shot. Going on around so the pretty. community. Look so at them rubbing the mud on her. So <laughs> Be sure to watch us. It's every not going to morning. work out. We're leaving you. This is hilarious. Oh, Fox 66. Because what Elsie doesn't realize is that our boss actually asked me during one of the breaks that we're going to get her to jump in the mud. I didn't think she was really doing. It. That's our girl. That is our girl. That's what I'm calling. This morning, St. Robert Catholic School in Flushing is closed, but not because of the weather. Principal Matt Robalski says an alarming number of students were absent yesterday due to severe illness. Now to state politics. Democratic gubernatorial candidate Bill Cobbs actively seeking support for the 2018 election. He was in Flint yesterday taking aim at the state attorney general Bill Schuette. Cobbs believes Shooty is too closely tied to the state politically to fairly run the water crisis investigation. New developments this morning, a petition created to support keeping two Saginaw public schools open has reached its goal. Now it's on its way to Michigan's school reform officer. Upset parents and other Saginaw residents started the petition on Sunday on change.org. Looking for a job? Well, we know where you should be in Saginaw. Saginaw Valley State University hosts its annual summer job and internship fair today. I'm Elsie Lujan Hayes. Welcome to NBC 25 Today. Across the nation this morning, people are getting ready to head out on the roadways for the Thanksgiving holiday. The hearing involved former MSU basketball player Mateen Cleaves has been delayed until December 1st. This after one of the attorneys had a death in the family. Cleves is accused of sexually assaulting a woman in a Monday Township motel room last fall. Ilse Luhan Hayes arrived on the scene early this morning. How old is she? Th he was 31. When was the last time you talked to her? Um, about 11.30 last night. Did everything seem okay? Mm -hmm. She looked real pretty and I didn't want her to go to the party and she wanted to go. A mother's intuition. Dietra Wafer tried to convince her two daughters not to attend a Saginaw block party near Perkins and 10th Street early Monday morning. Now, she's dealing with the pain of losing her 31-year-old daughter, Kintera. Uh, witnesses are telling us there was over 200 people in attendance. Uh, we were told that there was a, a rally of gunshots that rang out and nobody was injured. Uh, approximately an hour to an hour and a half later, a second shot uh, rang out. It was at this time that the victim was struck. Police searched the area for hours, trying to piece together exactly what happened. Police believe Quintero was at the wrong place at the wrong time. We don't believe she was the intended target, but we believe she was shot as two different set of uh, people were shooting back and forth. Now, another mother loses a child to gun violence. Her mother tells NBC 25 Quintero leaves behind a five-year-old little boy. He slept in the back seat of this red car as we talked, not knowing his mother was gone. It's hurt. It is hurt. This is somebody's mother. Uh, she is somebody's daughter. We asked that anybody with information come forward and let us know who the shooter was in this tragic killing. Hi, I'm Elsie. Jeff Urbanski, very nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet Come on you. in, please. Meet the Urbanskis. Like many families, technology plays a big role in their home. On any given day, you can find Jeff, Marilyn and their two teenage daughters 
texting, surfing, or posting almost every hour of the day. I mean, everything from me looking for a recipe, I go right online. I have to go on Instagram, check who posted pictures. Before we look at maps, street maps, as you were driving down the road when you're going someplace you've never been, now you rely on GPS. Jeff, who travels for work in Maryland, a flight attendant, are busy parents juggling multiple schedules. The family was up for the challenge, but not without reservations. Hey, what's up? So we're doing this experiment and for NBC, and we cannot be on social media for at least a week. We're not just negotiating a problem in our life. We're, we're negotiating society. David Gaffey is a psychotherapist from Saginaw. For over 30 years, he's been working with patients and behavioral addictions. Well, anytime we're used to using an activity or something to help comfort us, when we imagine that being gone, we feel that hole and we start to get anxious. We checked back with the family about a week later to see how well they were staying away from their favorite social apps like Facebook and Instagram. It turns out it was harder than they thought because of outside pressure. I had just gotten back from a trip and uh, so I hadn't really cooked, you know, had a, you know, had a home cooked meal. So and I called, the, I, I wanted to call the girls, but they were at school. So I sent them a text. Hey girls, you know, what do you guys want for dinner tonight? I'm running to the grocery store. Sophia had never responded, but Isabella did. She's like, tacos. <laughs> so I was like, okay. And then I'm like, ugh, I'm like, this is so hard. We enlisted the help of Gaffey, showing him video clips of the family. We wanted to find out why was this challenge so hard? We have a generation where we don't know how to take a deep breath. You know, if you don't reply to a text within 60 seconds, someone might be texting back, what's wrong? Are you mad at me? And, and we're used to an instant kind of, kind of society. In the end, group texts doomed both dad and Isabella. The families are texting me saying, and asking questions and asking questions going, Jeff, where are you, Jeff, where are you? With my palm group chats with someone like asking a question and no one responding, I'm like, oh, well, I know the answer, I'll respond. So I would respond and then I'd be like, okay, I'm not responding anymore for the rest of the day. When we're in a society where we're constantly responding instantly to input, over time, our own impulse control gets weaker and weaker and weaker, and we have a harder time in many areas of our life saying no. Because that's the only way that they function. Mm -hmm. So for us to change our lifestyle, we, we, weren't, we weren't able to work with the rest of society, and that was the challenge that we were faced with. <laughs> By all accounts, it appears to be an actual crime scene. Police, firefighters, even grieving family members. But while it looks real, it's not. Fenton High School students capturing every step of a crime scene as it happens, including local news stations covering the scene. Rich Ashley, a Fenton High School media news teacher, and his students are shooting and acting in a PSA recreating a homicide that will later be used by Crime Stoppers. We had an actress who was playing the mom slash wife who came home third shift and, and found her husband deceased. Michigan State Police, Sheriff and other agencies helped with the project. Uh, Students who had likely never been this close to a crime now getting a chance to help law enforcement, all while gaining real life experience. When I get these shots, I try to make sure that the focus is on what we want. So a lot of the dramatic faces, like uh, between the daughter and the mom, we wanted to make sure that we get those on camera. The student's hard work is being recognized. Last year's PSA, titled A Lifetime of Consequences, has received nearly 300,000 hits on YouTube. It's really neat to let law enforcement tell the students and the students kind of came up with this idea. I just asked them, could you help me educate the community what Crime Stoppers is about?